So, Dr. Utel, the research that you're doing, what conclusions should we, as the public, draw from that, and what behaviors might we want to reevaluate, and what that the behavior should we employ if we're trying to present information? So, one thing we've been working on on a lot in recent years is is our social influences on decision making. So, we we think of decisions as something that you make individually, and the prototypes are a person in isolation choosing, um, do I want to buy the, um, the candy bar or the bag of chips? Or do I want to invest in the high-risk stock or in the low-risk bond? And the prototype is a single person that has lots of information and is by themselves. If you think for a moment about the actual decisions you'll make tomorrow or next week, that's pretty rare. Even when you're shopping, there's people around you. Even when you're online shopping, you're looking at other people's viewpoints. When you are when you are deciding to invest, you are influenced by the stories that are in the CNN article about real people making investments. You have people near you a lot of the time, a spouse or a family member or children or somebody that, that are near you in many of the decisions you make. So in all these contexts, there's a social backdrop that isn't fit by sort of the everyday sort of our stereotype of what an individual decision maker is doing. So what we've been doing in the lab is trying to understand why those social contexts matter the way they do. And so we, we're under working under a model that we're, when people are faced with social contexts, they're actually tracking very, very different things. That they're actually tracking things like reputations, what their decisions say about themselves, and they're not tracking sort of traditional economic rewards. That you have distinct brain systems that track traditional economic rewards and reputations and, and the sorts of interpersonal interactions that we all engage in. So if that model is correct, what that implies is changing the frame of decisions from thinking about them in isolation to thinking about, for example, what other people say about your choice or giving people information about what others think of the choice could have very powerful effects on decision making. And this is something that people can do. I mean, we are actually testing interventions right now where we give average college students two types of financial literacy measures. One, the traditional one that tells them about strategies for making good decisions. Another one, which is very simple, it just says, think of a friend. What would your friend advise you to do? But it doesn't actually tell you anything about financial literacy. And the early results suggest that just having people think of a, of a, a friend without even really additional instructions is better at helping reduce impulse purchases than traditional financial literacy planning. So it's a, it's a, it's a powerful idea and one that we're, we're still early in the early stages of exploring, but it's a pretty intuitive one.